everyone, welcome back to today's video. So what today's video is gonna be, is going to be the top five favorite scooter tricks that I do. Now, I also need to explain. Always that car late. Now, I also needed to explain something and why didn't I upload yesterday? So I filmed this custom scooter build yesterday and it was uh, something I've been talking about for probably about two weeks now and it was a Fortnite custom scooter build. Now, I filmed it yesterday and edited it and everything like that and it looked, it came out amazing. I, I could not be any happier with how the scooter turned out. But then I logged onto YouTube today and what do you know? I freaking see the Vol Pro Scooters posted a Fortnite custom scooter build. <sighs> So I don't even know if I even want to post it because if I post it, everyone's going to say I copied the vault because they did it first. And if you guys want to see the Fortnite Cousin Scooter build, then I'm going to give this video a big thumbs up. I'm not trying to talk crap on the vault at all. I'm, I'm just saying that I've been talking about this scooter for quite a while. And then they go and decide to make one as well. But anyways, guys, we're going to get into the top five my favorite flat scooter tricks right now. So the first scooter trick that I'm going to be going over is obviously gonna be truck driver. Now the truck driver, I have been a fan of this trick ever since I started riding. I used to ride BMX previously, big fan of Garrett Reynolds, and what did Garrett Reynolds always do was truck drivers. So when I went to scootering, that was the trick that I always wanted to do, and that I basically always did do. I low-key learned how to truck driver before I learned how to double it. So that's what we're gonna be doing right now. So when you guys do a truck driver, what you guys wanna do is get really good at doing 180 bar spins. And this is like a really good way how to get used to it. Basically, just go pull up the front end and throw the bar. You can pull up your front end and just throw the bar and try to do a 180. So the next thing what you want to guys want to do with truck drivers is get used to doing 360s and kind of leveling out. So when you guys do the 360, try to level out as best you guys possibly can. And by leveling out, I'm going to put it in slow mo right now. What I'm talking about. So basically, my arms are loose, so I can throw the bar spin if I want to, or I can do a bunch of other stuff. So see when I go and do the 360, what I actually end up doing, so I pull really hard with the 360, so that way I can relax midway through the 360, and then throw a bar spin. So, I'm gonna show you guys right now what I do. I like to throw my bar spins kind of later in the trick, as far as like when I get to 180, I throw the bar spin, but a lot of people also do like 180 bar and then throw the rest of the 180. But that's not how I personally do them, I like to do them like kind of later, so, but who knows, I guess I'll see it in slow-mo. I'm gonna redo it. Shout out because I got a lot of uh, cracks in my driveway. That's how I 360 bar. Remember when you try this trick, make sure to get to 180 and then throw the bar spin. It helped me out a lot and that's what I ended up doing. So right now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a couple of different truck driver maneuvers for all you guys to see what you guys can do with them. By the way, truck drivers are a lot easier if you go and do them downside bar, which like let's say you turn to the left, throw with your right hand. I do a top side, spin to the left and throw with my left hand. It's easy, but definitely like this is a lot easier. And they look cooler too, I'll show you guys. The next trick what I'm gonna be teaching you guys is double heel whips. Now double whips and double heels feel completely different. If you guys are really good at double whips, then it's time to start moving on to moving to heel whips. And that's to do double heel whips. If you guys are getting good at doing tail whips and you guys are now moving on to double whips, starting to catch your double whips flat, now let's start trying to move on to doing opposite whips, AKA a heel whip. Now with heel whips, what you guys wanna do is just first get the normal heel whip down. Just start forming the motion of a heel whip and so you get the feeling of doing the heel whips. Now, if you guys are getting semi-decent at heel whips, you guys don't need to be like great at doing heel whips to be able to do double heel whips. You just have to be able to jump higher. And that's probably the number one thing in doing double heels is being able to jump high. Now, for me, I personally don't jump very high normally, but when I do double heels, I try to more so focus on how high I jump versus like actually whipping it quick. Sorry for the mic. So when you do a double heel whip, what you're gonna do is really focus on the jump, jumping high and heel whipping. I'll give you guys a demonstration right now. All right, so the next trick that we're gonna be doing right now is gonna be finger whips. Now, finger whips are definitely one of my favorite tricks to do flat by one of my favorite riders of all time. His name is Matt Summers. He doesn't ride scooters anymore, but his tip on how to finger whip actually helped me tremendously. So I'm gonna teach you guys right now what I do with finger whips. So what I do when I do a finger whip, I don't go and pull it up and go down to it. Because if you do that, you're not gonna land it. When you do a finger whip, what you wanna do is bring it all the way up to you. I, I don't know if you guys can see. Bring it all the way up to you without leaning down at all. You jump as high as you can, 
bring it up, throw it down. Same thing when you're at the skate park, waiting for your run, just like this. Let's give you guys a demonstration. Sorry if it's slightly overexposed. Now another helpful tip that I can give you guys when you guys are learning how to feet rip is when you go to pull it up, go and push the bars forward a little bit. Like pull it up, push it forward. So that way the back of the deck right here is going straight into your stomach. So that you can whip. Just makes it a little bit easier for you guys trying to do a flat. Now this isn't one of my favorite tricks flat because I really suck at it, but I want to try it because it looks really cool. It's one of my favorite tricks to look at flat. So I'm gonna go and uh, see if I can do it. But last time I did it, I threw my scooter through a window. I think that's as close as I'm gonna get today. So this next trick, for a lot of people it's easy, but also for a lot of people it's hard. It's trip whips. Super overexposed. Now trip whips flat, they're a weird one for me, I'm not gonna lie. Some days I do them really good, some days I do them really, really bad. But today I'm gonna go and try to do it really good, obviously. Now if you guys can double whip really good, I would definitely recommend trying trip whips. You're gonna have to jump higher and whip a lot faster. I gotta try it now. You just lost yourself. Oh. I don't think that But that trick sucks. So always remember when you guys do a triple with flat, you guys gotta jump high and really whip it really, really, really fast. That's basically all you gotta do is jump really high and commit. Probably one of the hardest tricks for me to commit on, but we did it. But this next one is going to be whip to heels. Now whip to heels, I kind of have a weird relationship with. Because when I first originally learned how to do them, I would go and rewind and then I would land switch, AKA section. Well this is 2018, but we, we don't say that kind of stuff because I could get demonetized. But anyways, when you do a whip rewind, how I do them is same exact thing. You guys gotta jump really high. Remember, all these tricks are gonna be a little bit more intermediate than other ones. If you guys wanna look at my top five beginner shooter tricks, click the card right there. So when you guys do a whip to heel, what you guys want to do is when you guys jump, make sure when you get to the point where you start rewinding, you're going to want to already be rewinding at the peak of your jump. So when you jump, get that whip rewind part in as fast as possible. So remember, when you guys are jump at the peak of your jump, you already want to start the rewind. Remember, when you guys go and do whip to heel, you guys want to jump and kick it back. I kick it kind of weird. I kick it with like the side of my foot. Like that. A lot of people go and kick it like that. It's basically however you feel comfortable rewinding, that's how you want to do it. And now I remember why I hate doing that trick so much. Well remember you guys, scootering is about having fun. The one reason why I'm better riding flat than I am better at like doing ramps is because that's all I had when I was starting to ride scooters. I would say for probably about the first four years of my riding life, I went and only rode flat. I know that's the same exact way for Henrik. I know there's a whole bunch of other kids out there that only ride flat because that's all they have around you. Now where I lived, there was only flat. There were street spots, yes, but they weren't very good. Like I'm sure that's the same way for a lot of you guys, is that there's a lot of street spots, but there's no skate parks. And the closest skate park could be 30 minutes to an hour away. That like how it was for me. I had my friends that loved to ride scooters with me, so we would go and play flat scoot all the time. That's basically the way how we got really, really good at riding flat, is that once you get once you run out of tricks to do, you have to learn a new trick to be able to continue the game. So that's how we learn like double whips, triple whips, whip bars, and basically every day we're progressing to get better and better and better. And that's what Scoot's all about, is to always have something new to do, and then you guys are both constantly trying to do the same trick, and then you guys end up getting it and learning it together. So if you guys are in the same type of situation as me, as where I had no skate parks around you, Always remember to keep your head up, ride, keep pressing through, and never let go of your dream of becoming a professional scooter rider. Because one of the most amazing things about Instagram and YouTube and just social media in general is that it's a platform to where you can publicize your content and reach it to thousands if not millions of people to where you guys can all connect and become friends. You guys don't need to be face to face to be able to play Scoot. Buy some friends on Instagram, PlayStation, Xbox, whatever. You guys can become friends and then you guys can, let's say, play a game of Instagram Scoot. If you actually, that's a really good idea. 
Sorry about that. That was a flower in my face the whole time. If you guys want to see a Instagram game of scoop between me and my boy Austin, sorry Austin, I'm including you. There's his Instagram right there. But if you guys want to see a game of scoop over Instagram so I can kind of give you guys a demonstration of what you guys can do, make sure to go and share this video and like this video because I think that would be an amazing way to connect with people so you guys can learn how to create some scootering friends that are might not even be that far away from you guys. What else, I want to touch back up on the subject of becoming a professional scooter rider if you guys have nowhere to ride. Look at Henrik. He is from, he's from freaking Austria where there's nobody. There's literally no scooter riders over there other than him and a couple of his close homies. And he's literally the best flat rider in the world. And, and he's my boy, 100% shout out to Henrik Palm. I love watching your videos, keep up the great content. He films his videos on his phone and has 31,000 subscribers. And he has like, I think over like 50,000 followers on Instagram just from riding flat, you guys. I mean, I know it might seem like he's, oh yeah, it's because he's insane. But practice makes perfect, and that's how he got to being as good as he is. He constantly practiced, never let go of his dream of becoming a professional scooter rider, and basically making a career for himself with scootering. So always, you guys, remember, never let go of your dreams, because there's 97% of the people give up on their dreams, and their bosses are the 3% of people that did not quit their dreams. Always pursue them, always stay smiling, stay positive, positive. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.